There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Now there's five cations and four anions that we talked about in the last couple of videos. And this video specifically, we're going to cover lead in more detail. And the reason why is because the dopamine itself says gather, process, and present information to describe and explain evidence for the need to monitor levels of one of the above ions in substances used in society. And the above ion is going to be lead because lead is basically the most poisonous of the ones mentioned here. Now, because it says gather, process, and present information from secondary sources, I have attached in the descriptions below, I have attached two websites that you should look through. And it gives more information about the potential consequences of lead poisoning and where the actual lead poisoning comes from. But the five sort of main areas that it comes from, there's other areas as well, but these are the main areas, is petrol. And this was especially before 2002. Now, in 1984, in 1984, they started to phase out using lead in petrol. So that's why it's called, nowadays it's called unleaded petrol, so lead but it's unleaded, which means there's no more lead inside. But beforehand, they were using lead in petrol. And by 2002, it was completely banned. So they were starting to remove it by 1984, but by 2002, it was completely banned. So cars beforehand were using lead as their petrol, and that was, would then come out of the exhaust. So the gas that comes out of the exhaust would have had some lead inside. Also, it often comes from waste incineration. So for example, if we have lots of waste here, and we put that into you know, the furnace, the area where you burn all the actual garbage because the garbage itself might have lead in it if we burn the garbage with lead in it that might mean that out of that pipe not the pipe but the um, exhaust area might also come lead so lead itself might come from the waste incineration another source was paint it's paint that was used especially in the 1970s again it was banned after the 1970s because paint with lead in its side would mean that any any of that lead that gets on your fingers or in your mouth could cause you problems, right? So that lead itself was used in paint back in the day, but nowadays less and less is being used, especially in Australia. It's actually banned in Australia, or it's all oh, it's not banned, but you can only have very small amounts of it in your paint. Beforehand, that was not the case. And also, for example, toys from overseas, especially in parts of China, would and this was a there was a controversy a couple of years back where people said that lead they used lead paint to paint over toys and those toys would then be shipped to America and to Australia etc etc and that would cause lead poisoning from maybe some of the babies or the children licking the toys which is why there was also controversy about that so it says happy whole lead days as in they get toys which have lead on it so it's happy holidays but, uh, but yeah, that's a, I guess, an interesting pun and also smelters so ones that smelter ore, so this is to do with mining itself, mining. So the smelters would have, there would be some lead maybe inside the ore, and when they smelter it all, then the exhausts would often have lead in it as well. So these are five sources, these are some of the five sources of lead. And why do we need to talk about lead? So it says, describe and explain evidence for the need to monitor levels of one of the above ions in substances used in society. So, so far, I haven't really given you any evidence as to why we need to monitor it. I've just given you the, I've just given you the sources of lead. Some of the evidences are obviously the health consequences. So, I've, I've put in two parts, health consequences and the cause of lead pollution. The cause was obviously the ones we just covered. I'll cover them again in a, couple de in a bit more detail in a second. But the health consequences is one of the main reasons why I need to actually monitor it. So, for example, if you consume it to a sort of higher level, you can have an increased risk of birth defects and of miscarriages, which means that your children, your offspring, your babies might have deformities, or if you're even more unlucky, you will have a miscarriage, which means your baby will be dead before it um, is born. So these would be one problem with having too much lead in your, in your body, which can come from these different sources I mentioned beforehand. Also, you can have organ damage if you have too much lead in your body. So your or lead will actually attack your body, attack especially your organs, your tissues, and that can cause problems as well. 
Another problem was damage to the nervous system, such as your nerves and your brain. Again, they attack your nerves and they attack your brain. So that would not be a good idea to have too much lead in your diet or in your wherever else it comes from, from the water or from other parts. It can also cause illness in young children. So this is another problem as to why we need to make sure we have only small amounts of lead in, in our system. And if we have way too much, so, I mean way too much doesn't mean it has to be way weight, like it doesn't have to be grams or, or even kilograms, even just having a certain amount, which is way too much, can cause death. This way too much can still mean that it's actually very small quantities, but that's just for us, that would be considered way too much. And that could cause death itself. So these are five possible health consequences from having too much lead in your body, which is one of the reasons why, so describe and explain the evidence for the need to monitor levels of one of the above ions. This is some of the evidence. We know this happens, right? We know that if we have too much lead, this can happen. And what were the cause of lead pollution? I mentioned earlier that to figure out the causes, what we can do is we can take different types of samples. So for example, we might take an air sample at some of the following sites. And again, we take the air sample and then we put it through the atomic absorption spectrometry machine. And these air samples might be taken, are usually often taken at waste incinerators. So once we burn the waste, we check out in terms of the air around it, how much lead is in the actual air sample. Metropolitan areas, especially obviously maybe back in the day when we still use lead in cars, because metropolitan areas would be your cities, right? So for example, Blacktown, Sydney, uh, CBD, um, all these different areas are metropolitan areas. And that would mean there'd be lots of cars driving around. And if you used leather petrol, that would mean that the cars would, um, obviously in their exhaust, there'd be lead, which means we would find high levels of lead pollution in metropolitan areas if cars were still using lead in their, as in their petrol. Also, we often check smelters. Again, smelters would be you know your mining areas. The reason why is because in the ore that they mine, they then smelt it, they put in the furnace, there might be lead in there. So if they release that lead into the atmosphere, then the air sample would show high levels of pollution, lead pollution. Now, we also can also take soil samples. So for example, we might take soil samples close to old buildings. If the old buildings were made, um, the walls were painted through using old paint, lead paint with the high lead content, that would mean that the soil around it, after the actual wall has sort of crumbled and gone to soil, then the soil itself would also have high lead levels. So we check all buildings, the soil around it to see if there's high lead pollution. We check again the mining area, so the air is close to smelters, and we check the incinerators, soil close to incinerators, to see if there is a high level of lead in those areas. Because also one thing with lead, it's a very heavy element, very heavy atom. So if, for example, let's say we have our incinerator here and gas comes out of it from burning, let's say waste, right, burning garbage. But because it's so heavy, that means it's quickly gonna drop. So it's gonna be in the soil surrounding the incinerator because it's not gonna travel far because it's quite light. So we check the air around those places. We also check the soil around those places because it won't travel far. So the soil around it will be high lead pollution. Areas maybe a kilometer away won't be affected or won't be massively affected. And we also check the water samples. Obviously we can drink it, which would be a really bad way to get lead. So we check the water samples taken at close to smelters. Maybe there might be a river close to smelters. So we check that or other industries which might deal with lead. We check the water in, in those areas and also just generally at mining areas themselves it's in case lead leached into a river in those areas. So we check the air samples, soil samples and water samples for your different for your levels of lead pollution using the atomic absorption spectrometry and these are some of the values. So for example if air contains less, so if it has less than 500 nanograms per square meter, uh, per cubic meter that would be okay, so this is a safe level. And if the water, the drinking, this is specifically the drinking water, so specifically the drinking water, if it has 0 0.01 part per million per liter, that's also safe. So if our drinking water has this much lead, we're also safe. So we're gonna check these samples at the areas that are known for lead pollution to make sure that the levels are in their required amounts, which they usually are in Australia. 
And the reason why we check that, the reason why we monitor it, is because if we don't and we, it gets into our body, then it will cause these five possible consequences, health consequences, such as increased risk of birth defects, organ damage, damage to nervous system, illness in young children, and death if we have high levels of lead exposure. And that was the stop point to gather positive information to describe and explain evidence for the need to monitor levels of one of the above ions. The ion we chose was lead in this, the one most people would choose, in substances used in society. And obviously, also we want to make sure there's no lead in toys because kids use toys and kids will lick toys, kids will put toys in their mouth, and then lead can go from the paint into their mouth. So we also make sure that all substances we use, all items have no lead on them. And if you want to go for the secondhand data, the websites, just look in the descriptions and read through those as well. That'd be quite useful hopefully. But yeah, hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.